Anxiety and depression can lead to a cluttery home. A cluttery home can lead to more anxiety and depression. And since we're feeling this way, we do less about the house, which makes it even worse. And it just continues to cycle like this. Psychology Today shares that clutter overstimulates our system, visual, olfactory, tactile, causing our senses to work overtime on stimuli that aren't necessary or important. Clutter draws our attention away from what our focus should be on. Clutter makes it more difficult to relax, both physically and mentally. Clutter constantly reminds our brains that we still have a huge to-do list. Clutter causes anxiety because the idea of sorting piles is overwhelming. Clutter creates feelings of guilt and embarrassment, particularly when someone drops by unexpectedly. Clutter frustrates us by making it hard to find anything we need, keys, bills, checkbook, etc. The clutter in our home not only makes our homes look bad, it makes us feel bad as well. I'm going to share a few statistics that I found from this book called Life at Home in the 21st Century. And then I'm going to get into some action steps that we can do to stop this cycle. A few years ago, the book came out, Life at Home in the 21st Century, where scientists, anthropologists, and archeologists did some research on our homes, and they found a definite link between an overabundance of household objects, what they considered stressful home environments, and the homeowner's health. It definitely affects women's long-term well-being, and they found that men apparently aren't as affected by the mess, but I've heard a lot of men say otherwise. They measured cortisol levels over a number of days and in the cluttered or messy homes there was a higher rate of depressed mood towards the evening. With 3.1 percent of the world's children, U.S. consumers purchase more than 40 percent of the toys consumed globally. In the United States they found that child-centered homes with the children's belongings spilling out into other living spaces, the living room, the dining room, kitchens, and even their parents bedrooms, parents purchased more for their children because they work more to maintain a quality of life and therefore feel guilty for not spending as much time with their children. Feelings of guilt and also knowing deep down that material goods are a poor substitute for time together, it adds to the depression and the anxiety. We simply have too much stuff surrounding us. In the United States, the average room has over 2,000 visible objects, and it's even more in the office or computer areas where we spend so much time, whether it's working, checking email, browsing, kids doing homework, whatever. So it is no wonder that we are overstimulated and anxious. And this is one of the reasons that my yearly decluttering challenge is so easy to accomplish. This year we're getting rid of 2,021 things for 2021. And it's not hard to complete. We normally don't realize the amount of things that are in our home that surround us. Getting rid of things is emotional work. Even when a family is ready to declutter and just be rid of items, they tend to get paralyzed by emotions, either sentimental attachment to things or just guilt for having spent money on it and what value it is and thinking I should, I should get some of that value back out of it and I should, I should sell it. Our schedule, our day-to-day -day schedule is often so cramped, but then even in our leisure time, it's plugged in. So it's not giving our minds time to really unwind. One more point before I get into the action steps, and that is that organizing is not simplifying. We simply cannot acquire enough coordinated bins, boxes, or baskets to put things in to give us the calm environment that we long for. Putting stuff in bins just means that now stuff is semi-controlled. It doesn't address the core issues we have of either collecting things or having a difficult time parting with things which means that we just continue in more of the same. To make a difference in your home, to bring calm and peace in your home, to make your home easy for you to keep clean, easy to maintain, you have to get rid of so much more. We have to declutter enough so that it's easy for us to assign homes for the things that we actually use. Life at Home in the 21st Century is a great resource. Like they, they documented the effects of clutter really well. And although that's fascinating, the book itself didn't offer any solutions to this. But 
don't worry, there is hope. I have been there. I was that person with a completely messy house that was terrified when someone knocked at the door. Every surface in my home was full of clutter. There was so much clutter everywhere, it was difficult to clean. I was completely ashamed at the state of my home, and I was depressed, and I was so anxious at the thought of getting rid of things that I might need someday. I felt so stuck. But I can tell you now that I am on the other side of that, and it wasn't a quick fix. It didn't happen overnight. It took slow, steady steps. Yes, there were days that I messed up. There were days that I didn't get rid of anything. There were days that I didn't clean any part of the house. But it was constantly coming back to this, I have a plan and I'm going to just work on this one little thing today. And that is how we stop the cycle. So for starters, I recommend committing to a morning and an evening routine. Stop looking at all of the things everywhere, all over the house, on every part of the house, on every surface, and just say, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this in the morning, I'm gonna do this in the evening. And this is all I'm gonna do for right now. My morning reset is a quick kitchen tidy. So where I put away things, I put away the boxes of cereal, I put away the stuff that I made breakfast with. Then washing one load of dishes. And when we're behind, we think like, oh my gosh, I gotta wash the dishes and look, it's gonna take me hours to get all of that done. No, no, no. Just wash one load of dishes. Over the next few days, as you're doing this morning and evening, you will get caught up and all those dishes will get done. It doesn't have to be done today. And then wipe off the counters and stove. This means that next time we go into the kitchen, we have a clean space to work at, which sets our future self up for being able to have a decent meal. When the kitchen's always messy, then I just wanna order takeout. I don't actually want to to clean the kitchen so I can cook. The evening reset is the same. Quick kitchen tidy, pick up all the stuff that I used for making dinner, wash one load of dishes, wipe off the counters and stove. And I do this after dinner so that I can go relax and it's not sitting there waiting for me before I go to bed. Because if I wait until I'm ready to go to bed, then I'm just tired and I think oh, I'll just deal with it in the morning. So I have to do it right after dinner. If this list seems too daunting, then just focus on doing the dishes. You don't have to tidy up, you don't have to wipe the counters off, just do a load of dishes. And if doing a load of dishes is still too much, then just do one dish. Anything worth doing is worth doing partially. Any step forward, no matter how small, is still a step forward. I know this routine seems oversimplified and like, well, if we're just gonna wash the dishes, like that's not gonna affect the house. I mean, look at this mess. But when the dishes are done, the rest of life doesn't seem as daunting. And seeing the evidence that you accomplished something gives you a boost of self-confidence. It makes us feel better. I did something today. Even if it was just washing one dish, that was more than I did yesterday. So I'm ahead. After you do this for a week, then you can start working decluttering in it. You can spend five minutes clearing off more counter space so you have more area to work and cook in. You can work on one drawer just three days in a row until it gets done. It doesn't matter if it's going slowly, it's still progress, it's still happening. I recommend starting in the kitchen because the kitchen tends to be the heart of the home. This is where we get all of the stuff done. So if we get this simplified and cleaned up, then it can make a big difference on our mood. And it's important to get the kitchen under control before moving on to other areas of the house. Otherwise, we tend to go like gung-ho and we just like work kind of sporadically all over the place and we don't get the calm and the peace that we're longing for. Next. Talk positively to yourself. If you find negative self-talk going on, change it to something positive. If you think, oh, I can't do it, I'm too tired. Tell yourself, I have enough energy to do what I need to do. If you think, nope, I hate doing the dishes, focus on the result. I love having the dishes done. This is a gift for the future me. And future me is going to be so pleased that these dishes are done. And please know that you deserve a nice house. You deserve a house that's clean, that's clutter-free, that's easy for you to maintain. Tackling clutter is so hard to face when you're in the midst of depression, but every single little step can add to a big accomplishment. One small step every day creates a ripple effect. It's like dropping a pebble into a pond and it starts small, but it just continues and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it will lead to a change in your entire home. 
from clutter on all the counters to clear surfaces in every room. It is possible and you can accomplish it. If you're like me and you love checklists and checking things off, I created the Home Reset Checklist to help you establish this daily routine. I've broken it down into what I had to do, but these PDFs are editable so you can change them to fit your needs and the needs in your home. I'll put the link to the Home Reset Checklist in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.